Okay, so this next one is very unexpected. It's from Daniela on Twitter who asks, do you think there will be Raylo in The Rise of Skywalker? And I got to say, first of all, that I am a Star Wars fan. I'm more a fan of the original trilogy and the old EU. I'm an old person at this point. What can I say? But uh, I wasn't a huge fan of the prequels, but I've been enjoying the recent uh, sequels pretty well, the more recent trilogy. And I do have to say that Raylo isn't something that I've given a lot of specific thought to. I like Kylo Ren and I like Rey. Uh, I like them both a lot. And I think that the tension between them is, is interesting and fascinating, but, uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't really know if we're going to, if we're going to fully see it develop on screen. Uh, I'm honestly, I'm kind of more curious about where their story is going to go after this film trilogy has settled down. Uh, whether Disney ha has any plans for, for their kind of arc, you know, beyond this. But, uh, if I had to make a prediction, I would say that they're going to tease it, but it's going to be tragically disrupted in some way. That would be, that would be my impression from stats or stats. And please forgive me on that. I'm going to have to ask you about the correct pronunciation the next time I talk to you. Uh, but on Twitter we have, are you going to follow up your ravishing writer series with an attractive artist series? And it's a great question. Uh, one that I, I honestly can't really answer because, uh, I haven't decided which one I'm going to go with. Uh, I very well may do an attractive artist series. I like the, I may borrow the name if you don't mind. So another one from my friend, Charles Sager on Twitter. Also, what was the first voice impression you perfected? And I've been thinking about this since you asked it. And, uh, I'm not really sure. I can't specifically remember, but I believe that one of the earliest ones that I really started to work on and get serious about was Arnold Schwarzenegger. I know he's a pretty common one, but my friends and I, my friend Chris especially and I uh, thought it was hilarious and we would prank call Walmart and we would ask them to connect us to the connecting department and, and uh, you know, the meat department and we would ask for spam and an Arnold voice and, and just, you know, waste a lot of time doing crap like that. Okay, so from Billy May on Twitter, we have, which Icelandic saga would you take with you on a deserted island? And uh, as I told you on Twitter, I love this one. Uh, and also, as I told you, it's, it's a very difficult one. My longstanding favorite is Hrabnikel's saga for a lot of reasons. I like that it's short and accessible and very powerful, very profound. But I don't know if it would make it a very suitable choice for this kind of a scenario because it's so short. Uh, Lord, uh, but the thing is, I, I can't really think of any others that I like as much. So I think I'm going to have to go with Rob Nickel saga. Uh, an alternate would probably be Bardar saga. I like that one pretty well, but yeah, if I were stuck on an Island, it would probably be uh Rob Nickel saga. So from William on Twitter, we have, what got you interested in literature of this type? And, uh, Again, it, it, it kind of gets back into why I got into languages in the first place. Uh, it's all kind of bound up in that, you know, Tolkien and uh, being fascinated by mythology and then kind of fantasy and wanting to learn more about where all these concepts came from. Uh, that's largely what drives it, I think, is just my, my kind of fascination with languages and with the concept of the divine and, and the supernatural with, with gods and, and demons and things like that. Uh, I'm just sort of haunted by it. I don't know why I'm kind of obsessed with the whole idea. And I think that's, that's basically what is at the core of it. Okay. So we have a surprise appearance here. We've got an invader on the stream, as you can see, because the next one is from Eva on Twitter who says, I want to know more about your cat. And, uh, the truth is rocket is a bit of a terrorist. He, uh, he's a year and a half old. I got him through my sister, Kate, who found him in a Walmart parking lot. He was about this big, no exaggeration. Uh, he'd been separated from his mother and was, uh, badly dehydrated and malnourished and was not expected to live. Uh, a good friend of mine who was a, a vet uh, tech, uh, helped me to, uh, save his life. And, uh, I've had him ever since I, uh, had to, uh, 
pretty much hand raise him as a kitten, which was uh, kind of fascinating. And as you can see, he's feisty. He likes to bite me. He, in fact, likes to viciously bite me. But I can't get mad at him because when I got him, he was this big and he'd been separated from his mother. And he also happens to have only three complete legs or feet anyway. Uh, his uh, back left foot uh, has a birth defect and, and didn't develop fully. But uh, he moves around pretty well, and it hasn't caused too many problems with him yet. So uh, I've been told that it may have to be amputated at some point, but I'm, I'm hoping to avoid that for the time being. But uh, I joke about how much of a terrorist he is, but I really love him, and uh, he's a good cat. He's very sweet, uh, even though he likes to bite me. So yeah, that's that's uh, you know pretty much all I can say about Rocket Man at this point. All right, this one I was not expecting at all. It totally you know, came out of left field and caught me off guard. Uh, from Jack Salve on Twitter, if you could have one animal feature, tail, fur, wings, fangs, gills, etc., what would it be? And I've never thought about this, even though I've thought about being like a, a Protoss from Starcraft, but never specifically just, just one animal feature. Uh, I've always liked Nightcrawler from the X-Men, so maybe a tail... Uh, Fangs sound kind of cool, but I'm not much on height, so probably not wings, although I think they look cool, uh, and it wouldn't be gills, so I like vampires, maybe fangs, I'm not really sure, that's, that's a tough one. Alright, so from Juana on Twitter, we have, what do you record with? And uh, it's a good question, I don't think I've ever been asked that before, uh, you may be able to see it, but... I use a Blue Yeti USB microphone, pretty standard for uh, streamers and YouTubers and things like that. It's not insanely expensive and it's relatively high quality and uh, versatile. Uh, so I use that as my mic. I use a Logitech C920 for most of my uh, recording when I'm at home. And by the way, Rocket is still here. You can see his uh, whiskers there. But uh, for the audio program i just use audacity which is uh free to use I, I i need to get a more uh professional one at some point but audacity is pretty easy to use and uh it's what i've used for years so that's what i use right now from molly duck Groot on twitter we have i can see piles of books in the background they look loved what are they and have you read them and uh of course i can't give the the full overview of, of all of the books but uh as you can see I do like to read. Uh, these are just the books that I keep nearby. Most of the ones on top of this shelf are uh, fiction and poetry that I like to have close at hand. I have a taller bookshelf over my right shoulder here uh, where I have other classics and, and some larger dictionaries and things like that. Um, but here just above my bed sort of on the interior of this uh, shorter shelf i have most of the uh, linguistic textbooks and uh, smaller dictionaries that i make the most reference to and, and that I, I find that i need the most uh, for my daily readings and 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 things like that uh, so it's mostly fantasy science fiction and horror uh, novels or short stories along with a lot of poetry and crazy foreign language stuff oh and yes i have read almost every one of them there's a there's a pension novel and uh an m john harrison novel up there that i got from amazon a few years ago and just haven't gotten around to okay blade on twitter asks do you gargle with olive oil and pesto sauce to keep your growl low like i do and uh i honestly have not heard of this technique uh it sounds interesting i may have to try it out but uh i i don't know i I'm a bit of a scrub, or I may be a bit of a scrub. Uh, the only thing that I've ever done to to try to keep my voice healthy is uh, drink water before and after I record. And occasionally, if it's feeling really crispy, I'll have some honey. And Rocket's uh, bumping the camera, by the way. But I'll have some honey. And uh, to clear my nose, sometimes I'll, I'll boil water and just kind of inhale the, the, the vapors or whatever. We have a very rare voluntary on-screen appearance by Rocket here. And that's fascinating that he's trolling me like this because 
we have what may be the first case of a trolling question here from PM Myers on Twitter who asks, what is the cause of your alopecia areata? And uh, I say that this may be trolling because, hey, come on. I mean, I clearly don't have any hair loss. I mean, you know, I, you might need to get your eyes checked, but look at this, look at this flowing mane, okay? I'll have you know that I was in a metal band in college and I am perfectly capable of growing out long, luscious hair that makes all the ladies jealous. Or I was 10 or 15 years ago before I started balding. Uh, in all seriousness, uh, I don't have uh, alopecia areata. Uh, I looked that up. I wasn't really too familiar with it. Apparently, it's a, an autoimmune uh, issue or it's caused by an autoimmune issue. Uh, my hair loss, I think, is just general uh, male pattern baldness. I believe uh, inherited from my father's side because uh, my grandfather, my paternal grandfather was uh, bald and so was my uh, paternal uncle. Uh, that's my best guess, I'm not really sure.